Yes, the Oilers won last night 4-2 over the Leafs. Let's bring in Jason Greger. And Jason, if you don't mind, I do want to say, first of all, condolences to your close friends, John Short and Robin Brownlee. Uh, can we talk about that for a second? And the hole sure, yeah. that it leaves in, in, in Edmonton media and uh, what they meant to you specifically. Because I didn't grow up listening or reading John Short, but I was a huge fan of Robin Brownlee. That was a kick in the pills for, uh, especially you guys, but for sports media in general. Yeah, John was, you know what, he was he was the guy really kind of the first sports talk radio guy in the country. And uh, really, I think, I had many people who, who grew up listening to him. You know, I, I know for, there's many people that back then is clock radio. And, you know, you had the clock radio in your room and you put it under the cover so your parents didn't know you were listening and you'd fall asleep to it uh, night after night. It was amazing. It was really like a, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but I was kind of learning sports talk radio just by listening. And then obviously I had the pleasure of my career started with John. I owe him a lot. Uh, you know, he gave me my first opportunity and worked with him for many years. And so he was just a gem of a guy. I helped out a lot of different people uh, over the years, lots of young broadcasters. And just with advice, it wasn't overbearing by any stretch of the imagination. And he could talk any sport, man. Like his his motto was any sport, any time, Doc. Uh, and he lived it. So it was great. And then Robin's uh, been working on my show for and and writing together at Oilers Nation for over 15 years, and you know he had a sudden heart attack last Thursday and passed, and that leaves his wife uh, Anna Lynn and uh, son Sam. And uh, if you don't mind, we do have a GoFundMe page set up at Sports1440.ca right on the front page. Anybody who wants to help out, it's a uh, you know it's obviously devastating time for them, and uh, you know Anna Lynn's now a single mom with a the son so uh, we're just trying to help him out through a, a really tough emotional time and what's probably going to be a little bit tougher financially moving forward. Um, if I don't mind, are you kidding me? I didn't, I didn't know about it. So thank you for promoting it. And just to take a bit of a hairpin, um, Scruffy, in the column that he writes for RodPeterson.com, said, Jason Greger is now the voice of Edmonton Sports. And I thought, oh, I got to ask Greger about that. I wouldn't disagree. But uh, how do you feel about Scruffy's anointing you as that? That's heady, heady, heady footsteps there, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll uh, I'll let others talk about me in that way. That's uh, it's nice that anybody <laughs> considers me like that. So that's uh, that's great. But um, you know what? Hey, it's great to you know. I love talking sports. It's a passionate sports market, and and right now the uh, the, the fans are pretty excited because uh, the Oilers are good. Deftly switching topics, Gregor. You're good. You you're good. And speaking of that, of all those great Oiler teams, they never won eleven in a row like this one. So. Man, talk, talk, go. Your thoughts. Well, I, I, and I, you know me, Roddy, I love doing research. I, I think it's important to point out that there's been 64 times in NHL history that a team has won uh, 10 or more games. 38 of them have come since 06. The, the shootout has definitely helped some teams because before, now there used to be overtime back in the 80s and 90s, right? But, uh, and it was different versions, four on four, five on five, and obviously now it's three on three. But the shootout guarantees a winner, whereas before there was ties. So that does skew it a little bit. But still, you know, the orders have gone nine. Here's one thing that it is, uh, uh, you know, you can't change regardless of the game. Uh, nine straight for the orders where they've only allowed two goals. And everybody knows about the orders offense. We, we've, the orders are the best scoring team in the league for a few years. But they struggled at being good defensively. They all talked about it at the end of last year. They all said at the start of this year. And then they fell on their face. I, I think they might have put a little bit too much pressure on themselves early on, to be honest. Um, but uh, they found their way. You, you can overlook Chris Knobloch and Paul Coffey, what they've done in changing a lot of things around the team, just confidence. Uh, you know, the penalty kill has been great. And they've really, uh, with Mark Stewart running it now, it's basically just the same guys, Rod. There used to be a lot of different people getting PK time. Now it's four defensemen and basically six forwards, and that's it. Now Dryside will get some time if there's a one of the six forwards is in the box or they need a, a lefty faceoff guy. But... Um, other than that, it's it's really been a team effort. Their goaltending's been great. Stuart Skinner's been unreal here as of late. Um, they're, they're getting balanced scoring. Ryan McLeod has three game winners in this 11 game uh, winning streak. He only had one in his career prior. So, you know what? You get contributions up and down your lineup, Rod. Uh, you got a much better chance to win. And the orders aren't relying on their power play. It's only 17% in this winning streak. And that's probably the best news for the orders because you know their power play is going to get better. And if they can win without it, that's a good sign. Well, I don't know how you, one of the things I respect you about the most is keeping your head while everybody around you is losing theirs. And I said, you know, I saw the stat Skinner's won 15 of the last 17 and like order fans didn't want to hear it. 
you and I talked about the fact that they do have NHL caliber goaltending the last time that you were on. I just, man, they, they just, they're, they're passionate up there, and I, and I get it. I guess my question to you is what do you think this team's capable of? Because they're proving they're top five in the NHL, right, as, as a team. Yeah, I think, you know, at the start of the year, you look at people across the league, most people had Edmonton as a top four or five team, right? So they didn't start that way, but they're there now. And, well, you know, the, the same weaknesses I thought at the start of the year, I thought that that was something Ken Holland would address at the trade deadline, and I still believe that. I think he wants to uh, get some speed and size more on his fourth line. I think, you know, you look at Vegas's fourth line last year, man. It was, it was incredible. It was dynamic. And you know what? They, they don't have to score a ton, but they need to be able to, to sometimes keep momentum going or sometimes start the momentum streaks. And I, and I think that's what they're going to need more of. For them now, Dylan Holloway's one guy internally, but I, I still could see them making two additions there on top of Holloway at the dead. Not big numbers like Corey Perry. Of course, the orders would want Corey Perry. He's a free player, right? There's lots of teams that are going to want him. Um, the advantage the orders have is they're actually good right now. So you know, you're a veteran UFA and you're looking around the league and you're like, okay, well, where do I want to go now? It, you know, his family has a big part in that decision. And uh, hey, I'm from Edmonton. I love Edmonton. Don't get me wrong. But I also know it's, you know, it's the northernmost city uh, of all the uh, all the cities in the NHL. And, uh, you know, for some people, if you're American, you don't really want to come there. I I don't take it personally. Trust me, there's not a lot of places in the States I want to live. So I don't take it personally. That's just it's what you know. And a lot of us like to go where we know. So, um, you know, I don't know if Corey Perry is going to come here. I do know 100 percent, Rod, that the orders have interest and they've expressed their interest to Corey Perry's camp. And I know he has interest in Edmonton, but I can't say. You know, if they're the leader by any stretch, that would be, just be lying, and I, I don't have the answer to that. So I think Corey Perry's someone they'd like to get because you don't have to give up anything. And then you can make a few other moves, not big-name moves, Rob, but just good, solid depth guys. Like, I think a lot of teams would have went after Dickinson if Chicago didn't, uh, didn't uh, re-sign him, right? So, um, and, and look to give him a contract, So which I think he's going to get a, a, you know, a big extension here soon. But, um, you know, Dickinson's a, a player that, hey, who knows, maybe they shock us and, and they do move him, but he'd have a lot of interest and he'd be ideal. Like, he is a really good player. I know Vancouver wa- viewers might be saying, what are you talking about? But go look at Jason Dickinson's career, Rod, pro- pre-Vancouver and post-Vancouver. For whatever reason, it just didn't work in Vancouver, but he's a really good player. Can you answer this in 90 seconds because it's burning on me and I mean, I don't want to text you outside our shows. So I'll ask you now. What exactly is the Jeff Jackson thing? Because people have told me that he's now the GM and Ken Holland's being shuffled out. You just said Holland will make a move or he may not at the trade deadline. When the orders were here in Sunrise, I was in the press box. Ken Holland looks v- every bit the man in charge. So what exactly is the deal the- there? Yeah, so Jeff Jackson's a CEO. He replaced Bob Nicholson, right? So he oversees everything. Do, does, uh, you know, if Ken Holland's going to make a move and stuff, does, does he consult with him at the end? Yes. But I don't see Jeff Jackson coming in and all of a sudden being the guy in, in my conversations with people that, you know, has neutered Ken Holland. I, I think, like a lot of things, Rod, you mentioned earlier, oh, yeah, Stuart Skinner sucks. He's never going to be good. Some things get overblown at times. I, I think it's being overblown that, that Ken Holland is, is a guy who's, who's not doing anything. I think that's false. I think he's heavily involved in things, but you now have someone above you that you have to, uh, you know, present things to and answer to. Um, does that mean Jackson could kibosh something? Maybe, but I think it'd be more of a he now has a voice in the conversation more than. And I don't think his voice though is necessarily trumping Ken Holland's voice. Thank you for straightening that out, Jason. Thanks for the time. Have a great day, man. Enjoy the hockey. Rod, thanks, man, and thanks for mentioning uh, Ruben and John. I appreciate it. You bet.